Hey everyone, Steve here. In this video, we're going to have an introduction to Power BI semantic model partitions and go through an example of how they use an incremental refresh. Now, a partition is simply a way to break up a large table into little chunks of data in a metadata way. This means that we're not physically breaking the table up, but internally we're splitting the table into sort of subsections. This is normally done on a column such as date, and we could do it by days, months, years. Let's say we do it by years. Imagine we have a very large fact table and we say, let's partition this by year. Internally, what we've done is we've segregated and split up this large fact table into groups of data, which contain a single year and every year of the data within that table. We won't see this and the end users won't notice when they use the report, but it's used internally by the Power BI engine, usually for refreshing. This means we don't have to refresh the data all at once. We can actually just refresh individual partitions, say it's just refresh this year. That means we just look at the section of this year, we ignore the other sections and just refresh that one. We can also do cool things such as go one by one through the partitions, and refresh them. That's very helpful when we have these really large tables, which might get out of memory when we try and refresh too much for once. Date is a really common one. And it's also partitions is how we set up incremental refresh and how Power BI knows and applies this incremental refresh policy. So that. Let's head over to the slide and see how this works. So if a partition is just simply a way to break up the data, what does this have to do with incremental refresh? Well, incremental refresh is really reliant on partitions. So say we have this data set. We could partition any way we wanted with any column. The very typical one is date. And this is because generally data gets added day by day by day. So this is quite an easy way to know that you're only looking at new data if you're looking at the specific date. So in this example, we could partition by year. And then what would happen is we would have three separate partitions. Now, of course, this is a very small table, and usually we use partitions for very large tables, but obviously this is an example. So bear in mind that if you have small tables, we're probably not that worried about this. This is generally for those, those bigger tables. So let's say we have partitions like this. Now we can see these split up. Internally though, there's not a lot of difference between this. It's just simply the code and the internal metadata of how the semantic model is storing the data. So what happens with an incremental refresh? Well, on incremental refresh, we have our older partitions. So let's just say we're refreshing the latest partition in this data set. These two partitions then are historic and they're loaded and kept in the semantic model. Unlike a traditional full data refresh, where the whole table gets refreshed and replaced, only specific data does. Now, when you're doing a full refresh, what actually happens is that we dump out all the data in the table and then load in all the new data that comes in. And that's why every value could change, the data could go down, it could go up. Power BI kind of handles this in the background and it, it does a very good job at um, if it stops halfway, it doesn't delete the data and leave you with no data, right? So it has all these error checks and doing a full refresh. However, with partitions, what happens is it does the similar sort of process. However, instead of dumping out all of the data, it's just going to uh, dump out any partition you're refreshing. And in most of the case, it will just be adding new partitions. So in this case, only this latest partition is refreshed. So the last data is loaded in. And if there was any data in this partition, it would be emptied out. If this is a new partition, then it's simply loaded. 
and then this is added into the data set. With incremental refresh then, one incredibly important thing is to make sure that you have query folding enabled. And this isn't a prerequisite for having incremental refresh turned on. It's possible to do this without query folding. However, as we'll see, it can dramatically reduce the impact of your incremental refresh. So what is query folding? Uh, link down in the docs, um, in the description, if you're not familiar. However, I will go through it quite high level now. Let's imagine that we have a SQL Server source on the left, and we're loading data into Power BI, and this is Power BI, the official Power Query logo, and that we don't see very often on the right here. So what happens when we don't have query folding? And this is when we're doing something without query folding. Query folding is just a process, by the way, and it's not something you can turn on or off. Power BI will automatically try and query fold, but there's some things that can stop it. So what happens without query folding? We simply say, we might get some data and transform it. So what happens is we need to get data from the source. We do this in Power Query. However, this is a SQL Server source. So any query coming to SQL Server has to be in SQL. Otherwise, the SQL Server wouldn't know. So that Power Query that you write actually gets translated to SQL so that it can receive the data. So Power Query sends a request in SQL to the SQL Server because this is the only way it can return data. If there's no query folding, it's just going to say, bring all the data in. So what happens is that it has the whole table of data. Now, let's say in this case, we actually have some transformation steps in Power Query, and that then happens in the Power Query engine. If you brought all the data in, and then we transformed them. This makes sense if you look at the applied steps, because the first thing is the source, then we do the transformations. So bring the data in, then do the transformations, and then we load it into the model. However, Power BI is quite clever with this. So actually what happens when we have query folding is that it turns out Power BI can actually write SQL quite well. So even though you do the steps where you say, bring the source in, let me do some transformations, what really happens under the surface is how a query can actually write a more advanced SQL statement. So it might actually write your all of your steps that you've done in Power Query, might translate them all into SQL. And then when it sends this, it sends this transformed uh, SQL query to the SQL Server. And then what actually happens is that the transformations are done in the SQL Server. This is a lot more efficient for Power Query because Power Query is great. It's not the most efficient at doing transformations because it has to connect to a big variety of sources. There's everything in memory. Other engines optimize, and it can kind of just repeat this out uh, back to the sources much, much better. Then only this data is uh, loaded back into Power Query, and then that data is loaded into your model. There is also an option of partial query folding. So when you do query folding, and you'll see in the links below, um, some cases where this may happen, there's some things that it doesn't know how to translate into SQL. So what actually happens is that it does partial query in the source. Then when it hits something that we don't understand how to translate back into SQL, there might be some transformations you can do in Power Query. It can't do a like-for-like -like in SQL. It then has to load the data up to this transformation into memory and then do the, the rest of the transformations in the memory. So the more query folding you can do, the better. And link down to uh, the amazing Alex Powers on the Microsoft uh, Fabric team, who has a great challenge to, to really see how well you can do query folding. So what does all that have to do with partitions? Well, let's think about an incremental refresh. What happens if we try and do incremental refresh on a source that doesn't query fold? We can see here that we have uh, 
three days worth of partitions. So we have the 1st of January, the 2nd of January, and the 3rd of January. And the grayed out area on the left, this is the, the data that in the old partitions that we don't want to refresh, we only want to refresh on the left in the bottom, the light gray, the, the 3rd of January, the new data, because we have the rest of the data in the par old partitions in Power Query already. What happens though, if we can't do query folding is we have no way of uh, filtering this data from the source. Because if we can't query fold, we have to do this next star and get everything. So with no query folding, we actually load all the partitions and everything back into the data, then uh, filter down just to the newest partition and then load. This completely defies the object of incremental refresh as we still have to load all of the data anyway. So not very good. It's possible, but a bit of a waste of time to apply incremental refresh like this. There are some edge cases you might want to, but generally not a good idea. So what we actually want is query folding. So we want the system to actually do the filtering. So we send the query and say, only give me the latest partition, which is in this case is this one day. Then we can load that. And then we load that into our data. So when you have massive data, this is a lot more efficient than reloading the entire table every single time. And again, it works correctly. The in-memory amount our power creator do is very small. Now, in order to set up incremental refresh, there's a couple of things I need to do first. I need to set up these two parameters called range start and range end. These need to be named exactly this. I'm not going to go through this in detail because again, I've linked down to the documentation and you can see how to set this up and all the nuances. But once you set this up, I'm going to go to the table that I want to do an incremental refresh. And you can see here that I just have a filter for the uh, column I want to incremental refresh is between these two dates. What actually happens is Power Query is going to use this filter to dynamically pass in variables that it's going to give itself and into the parameters. And then it's going to use that to filter the data to the correct partition. Now that I have it set up in Power Query, we can actually apply the incremental refresh policy. It's quite easy to do in Power BI Desktop. I'm simply going to right click on the data and go to the option of incremental refresh. Now, you will see here that we have a warning and I've left this in specifically. It says we're unable to confirm if the query can be folded. We can't fold to every single source. Things like SQL, Power Query can write a SQL to do filtering in the engine. But imagine if we had a CSV, an Excel file. You can't filter that in the Excel itself. So not every source can be folded to and therefore shouldn't be used in incremental refresh. You can see this in the docs as well. Uh, they do quite a lot of sources, but again, you need to check and understand if the source can fold. Now I'm happy because I know this source can fold. It can actually fold. So I'm going to say, yes, the table, which I right click to sales. So let me turn on incremental refresh. Now with incremental refresh, it says, how much data do you want to keep? I'm going to put this as five years. And then it says, how much of the data do you want to refresh? I'm going to say 10 days. So this basically means the last 10 days, I want incremental refresh. And then uh, I only want to keep five years worth of data. There are some options to do some advanced setting because we're talking more about partitions. Uh, go read the docs again. This is linked if you want to see this. Uh, most of this is quite often explanatory. You can just see it in the docs. So now I'm going to click apply. Actually, now nothing has happened. If I want to see this, I can go to my external tools and I'm going to open Tablet Editor. I can do this in Tablet Editor 2 or Tablet Editor 3, but I'm going to use Tablet Editor 3. Now I've loaded my data into tablet three. 
or if you want it, the free version of Tabular Editor 2 also works fine. What is cool about Tabular Editor is I can open, for example, my product table and I can see my partitions. Right now, product just has one partition. This makes sense because it's not a huge table and I haven't set any partitions about this or anything um, set up yet. Now, sales is the one I applied the incremental refresh to. So this is the one that we're going to partition so that we only load the correct data. However, if I open this, you'll see there is still only one partition. The incremental refresh policy won't actually happen until I do a refresh on the model. Or alternatively, I can come to tabular editor, right click on the table and say apply refresh policy. This basically forces it to create the partition. Now you will see these partitions. It kind of follows uh, the same format. I've said now refresh the last uh, 10 days. So what it actually has done is because we're on the 11th of November right now of 2025 at the recording of this video. You can see here that it said the year, the quarter, the month, and the day, which is November 18, Q4, 2025. It does then at least 10 partitions. And so if I refresh now, it's only going to refresh data in each of these partitions. It typically does this pattern and it sets these partitions up itself. It says then, okay, I've done the last 10 days. Now I'm going to keep doing day partitions till I get the next kind of increment in date, which in this case is month. So these partitions are going to be until the first of the month. And then you say, I'm going to do now month partitions until I hit the end of the quarter. So there's only one left in Q4. Then it's going to do quarter partitions. So it hits the end of the year. And then it's going to do my year partitions. So it kind of just fills out in this pattern. Um, and then it just makes out the, the partitions in a way that kind of goes back. And then this 2020 is the five years that I said when I said I only want to keep five years data. You can see if I click on a specific partition, it actually also has this refresh policy here. And you'll see, and we can see this in tab editor, you can see the start and the end. And these is gonna be the parameters that it's gonna pass in using the end queries, and that's how it's gonna dynamically populate each of these partitions. If I clicked on 2024, you can see here, and it has the start and the end date here. So this is how it knows what data to pick. It's possible that these partitions could be empty because this is just metadata. I've not refreshed and disapplied the partition here. So when we refresh, it could be empty. However, these partitions will exist just as metadata in order to contain the data. So there you have it. That is an introduction to partitions with an example of incremental refresh. In some upcoming videos, we're gonna get a lot more technical. We'll see how to actually refresh these partitions and how to dynamically refresh partitions, how to go through using cool tools in Fabric and also using APIs. You can do some really granular stuff with them, set up your own custom partitions and get really crazy. So make sure to subscribe if you want to be alerted for the next video. Please do like and share this video. It really helps us uh, keep producing these comments. Thank you very much, and we will see you soon.